Uncle from TacticalGamer.com here. Uh, got a quick script here. I'm going to show you about uh, making sure that if you are detected by your enemy AI, you get a proper reaction. First, I'm going to show what happens when we use the detected by trigger and the reason why I decided to do a custom script on this. Um, so basically, my scenario here is, is I got this test player here. Um, for this mission, most players are actually going to start out in these boats. Doesn't matter. I just got my test guy down here to, so I can speed up the testing process, which I will delete when I publish the mission. I'll just delete this playable unit. Anyway, this is waypoint one. I've already set it up so that we've got a uh, one guy patrolling around, one guy sitting in this truck. Uh, basically, I need to in this mission move through a, a series of waypoints on up this hill, eventually to rescue a hostage who is being held up at this location. Um, so I need to get all the way up this hill without being detected, uh, or else they will kill the hostage. So one way I can do this is use the detected by trigger. So if I put a trigger down, and it's got an area of roughly, for this case, uh, 100 meters, let's just look at how it behaves. So the activation would be blue 4 is detected by op 4, um, and let's just put something in here. Hint, um, you have been detected. Mission abort. All right, that's all we really need for our purposes here. Uh, basically, as long as op4 detects blue4 within this 100 meter radius, this will work. Um, let's take a quick look. I'm going to go to my test guy. Now the problem with this detection in one sense is that it's immediate. It really doesn't give us much of a chance to to uh, oh, we were already detected. So even if I kill these two guys, it's like as if they were on the radio immediately. So one way we can deal with that trigger is to um, just put it, give it a timeout. And this is where I ran into my problem and the reason why I needed the custom script it, because even doing a timeout uh, didn't work the way I thought it would. So if I get to this trigger again, and if I make it so that the trigger conditions must be true for this whole entire duration, um, okay, that should mean that if I was able to kill those guys within 20 seconds here, all right, that means that they can't still have me detected because they're not alive. You would think that that would work, but however, it doesn't. Um, it still fires on those units um, as if they're still detecting me even though I might have killed them within 20 seconds. So it's basically, I'm trying to simulate the fact that they, sure, they might have seen you, but they haven't got on the radio yet and informed the entire group of your location or that there's an attack coming in, that sort of thing. So I don't think that guy had a chance to see me. And so there we go. We certainly didn't have a chance to get on the radio. And this means that in 20 seconds I should be good, right? We can complete the waypoint. All right, I've completed that one waypoint and I can move on out my way. But again, you can see that I still got detected even though these guys were dead and could not have been on the radio. Um, so I'm going to do a custom script. Okay, so basically in the init player local script, I'm just going to call a new function, which is the script that we're about to write, or I have written. Uh, I'll just walk you through a bit of it. It's going to pass the current player to spawn the uh, script from memory. All right, so um, I, my last video was about how to set up scripts into using functions. Um, don't need to do a whole lot about that, but as you can see, I've created a class as detected uh, as a TG function, and it's in the client folder, and when I open that up, this is what we have. So basically, our player is this select zero, as we pass that player um, to the script. I could have just said player, but decided to do it this way. Um, we have a radius that we want to have uh, around the player. That So within, if uh, as long as uh, 
an op for unit is within, and the uh, the default is actually 500, I believe I created it to be. So I could put default is 500. Anyway, you could put player or radius player detected equal 500. Uh, if you don't want to do a custom description.ext file and custom parameters, I wanted to make it uh, so that players could make it easier or turn up the difficulty even uh, to replay this mission. So I used uh, mission parameters um, to set how what the radius is that you need to have op for close to you in order for them to be able to detect you and call you in on radio and how long it's going to take them to get onto the radio. I've set up 20 seconds here. That might be a bit long. I might need to shorten it down after some play testing to maybe 10, 15 seconds, but we'll see. Um, it's going to run a loop, a while do loop, so I've just set run to equal to true so that it will continue to do this loop. Uh, we need to know what time the player was to detect it to determine um, then if the timeout uh, has been reached uh, and then that got on the radio. Uh, just a couple of variables just to help the logic of the script. If the player was detected or not, if the player has been notified that they've been detected, and we're going to use uh, a couple of scripting commands. Let's get to that. Uh, we are going to use the scripting command near entities. So it finds entities in the sphere within a given radius. Make that a little bigger. Uh, so it returns only alive entities. All right, so we need to find use a position and then near entities and radius. So the position could be an object. All right, so I'm just going to basically use player uh, near entities and then a radius, which was what we got from the parameters, which is 500 meters. So it'll return all of the near entities, whether or not they're on any side, any near entities is going to get included. Uh, then I'm going to filter them for just enemy units, so they have to be of the side east in this case. And then I'm going to use the scripting command knows about to check whether or not a group or a side knows about the target. Uh, knows about returns a number in the range of 0 to 4, where 4 is max knowledge, so I used a, a value of just 0.4. So you can see in my script you don't need to worry about this event handler. Uh, I added that just because if a player throws a grenade, then obviously their position is going to be compromised. So that's some extra code I'm not going to cover in this tutorial. Um, but while the loop is running, uh, player detected is first set to false. It clears the variables for the enemies or entities that are near and the enemies that are near. So list entities near is get position player near entities and then the 500 meter radius. So it's just going to return all near entities. Then for each one of those entities that are nearby, it's just filtering for if the side is equal to east and if they are alive. So this is how I was able to get around that idea that if you kill the, the enemy unit that has detected you, you should then have been able to kill them before they get on the radio and it doesn't trigger the detection. Um, basically list enemies near uh, pushback is going to store each one of these that is an east unit and is alive then it's going to add them to a very uh, an array called list enemies near uh, and we're going to use then that list to check whether or not we're known so then that's what this is uh, put a space in here this little block here then is the next one list enemies near uh, for each of them I'm going to just basically check to see if each entity knows about our player. So this runs on every single connected client. Uh, and each client will be running a detection script to see if they are detected. Uh, the result will be changing a public variable that is the same for everybody that I called stealth status is detected. Uh, and if stealth status ends up being changed to detected, then it'll trigger some events in other triggers in the mission that will say that you basically you need to uh, proceed with the objective quickly uh, before they have a chance to kill the uh, hostage. All right, I added this line in here 
So this is good for testing. Uh, just system format. It's just telling me a list of all the enemies that are near that we are checking for knows about just while I was debugging. And when I published the mission, I would just simply comment that out if I didn't just delete the line. Then, so if the player is detected, and if the player has not been notified, then time player detected equals time. All right, so now we've taken a snapshot of what time it was that we got detected. Uh, we give a little message to the player that, oh, I think we might have been spotted. Um, that is only local to that player, so other players, even though it's group chat, other players in the group will not see it. It will take the player to actually communicate it. So unfortunately, that's just uh, that's just the way this works. Um, I might be able to do a remote exec to everybody in the group, um, but uh, I'm not haven't done that yet. Anyway, player notified equals true. So now, once we know the player's been notified, we're not going to trigger this message again and change the time uh, that we were detected. The next part is if player is detected and player notified, and that the time is now greater than the time we were detected plus the detected time limit. So if the time limit has been exceeded, we've gone past 20 seconds, then it's going to run equals false, which would stop this while do loop. It's going to give a message that your team has been spotted and to proceed with haste, and it's remotely executed from the server so everybody gets the hint once. And it just says self status equals detected. Uh, in the um, in its server local, or in its server, SQF, I have um, stealth status equals undetected, and then it's public variable there. So there we are. Um, now the next block after that was, if not players detected, and the player has been notified, so let's say um, now, when it runs through this loop, it detected you, you were able to kill the enemies, it's going to run through this loop again, and it's going to reset everything, and it's going to realize that you have not been detected by any alive units, in which case, you would get to this block, and it would say that, all right, well, if you're not detected, and you have been notified, then just reset that, so that player notified equals false, and that the time the player was detected is just set back to a zero. All right, so that will then reset it if you were able to dispatch the enemies that detected you within the time limit. And that's basically it. I have another fail-safe line here that if um, I had other events in my mission, um, that if you the VIP status, uh, you've secured the hostage, uh, or that if you were detected because of my event handler up here, um, that it would just stop running this script because once you're detected, I don't need to detect that you've been detected again. Um, sleep 2 just waits 2 seconds and runs this loop over and over again. So that's basically all there is to it. Um, and I'll show you a bit of how it worked. So back in the game, the nice thing about this is, is that now when I had just the trigger, 100 meter radius, I would have to put one trigger over this entire AO. So you know, it would have to be whatever, this is like, what, a three kilometer area here, whether or not we were detected, because I would want to have a boat out here, like be able to cover it in case the boats came in nice and loud, and these guys actually detected them. I would want to know that. And uh, in my version of the actual mission, there's a lot of enemies all the way around here. Um, they're not placed on this. As a matter of fact, let's just open up the actual mission file. So this is my actual mission. Um, with all the enemies laid out and that. Um, so I'll have to activate my test guy. So I'm going to make him playable and then put the probability of, probability of presence back up so we can play him. Okay. Let's see how this works out. This is actually now set for nighttime in that as well. So if I go down to my test guy. All right. Now if I get up here. Oh, I think we've been spotted, he says. Okay. So if I'm able to dispatch that fella, then I 
shouldn't, after 20 seconds, get any notification that I've been detected. Because they didn't have a chance to get on the radio. Now, basically, I would just proceed up uh, from here to waypoint uh, 2 to waypoint 3, and then move on to the objective. Um, but yeah, you can see that works just fine. And it's been over 20 seconds, and it hasn't fired. So th what's nice about this is that as I move around, I've got a 500 meter radius around me that if I am detected by any OP4 forces, this will fire. Um, so that's a nice way of doing it. So this is Uncle from TacticalGamer.com. I'll have links to the scripts and uh, maybe even the mission file in the description. Uh, any suggestions, uh, let me know. Please subscribe and catch you later.